Hi, everybody. I moved the mic over there because I'm going to be over there. So, sorry if you can't hear me. So, how's everybody doing? Oh no, there's a warning. My stream's current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. Oh well, we have all the bits. So, we have enough bits. Uh, is my audio okay? Just uh, send up smoke signals, whatever. Okay, thank you, Trina. Yeah, gut bomb. You need to clean those ears. All right, so let's... Uh, I'm going to play um, what I'm going to use for uh, pre-recorded content for what's in the box, just so that I could uh, show you something I've been working on. It ain't much, but there it is. All right, so let's switch to the... B camera. There we go. So, Frodo Jedi sent me something, and um, it's in this box. And I know what's in the box because we talked about it. But uh, anyway, um, he did me a great deal. And uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, trying this out. So, haven't opened it yet. I thought I'd do it live. So, it looks like it's really well packed. Frank does a great job of packing. And there's a label on the box from a previous shipment, so let me uh, obscure that. We don't want to be doxing anyone, so. Ooh, looks like some vintage styrofoam, too. Let me move to another monitor so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. Actually, I don't want to put that over there. I want to see the comments. So let's put this over here. All right. It's a black cat. No, it is not a black cat. Schrodinger's cat? Is that it? We'll set that over here. And some lovely blue plastic. Oops. And an empty envelope. So, padding. <laughs> Some other padding. Of course, everybody can, uh, who knows better, knows what this is by now, right? I think that's good for the packing. Let's set that in the chair. This one is in really, really nice condition. Looks pretty. And I believe that is it. The rest is just uh, packing stuff. So let me get this box out of the way. I'm 
trying very hard to keep this this area clean. So, excuse me while I uh, get this box taken care of. Okay. So what we have here is a Apple II GS. And um, as many of you know, I'm into HyperCard. Go figure. And one of the great things about HyperCard is they actually had a version of it for the 2GS in full color. So um, one of the things I wanted to do was do some HyperCard development in 2GS. Anyway, so on this, this one looks like it's in really, really nice shape. Excuse me a second. <coughs> so let's see who we've got in the chat. We have, come on, scroll. Jack 68K, Retro Mac UK, Garth Beagle, Trina's Techno Babble, Gut Bomb, Mac 84, Ron's Computer Videos, Frodo Jedi, thanks Frodo. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Trina, did I say Trina already? Yes, I did. So Trina gets uh, two recognitions, as she should. Who else do we have? I believe I've covered everyone. Adam McGee, hey! How you doing, Adam? Okay, so this is beautiful. So hopefully I've got the things I need to, to actually fire it up. So, um, but first we're going to open it up and take a look inside. I believe you lift it open from the back. <sighs> Sorry, styrofoam. Get off there. So these little tab doohickeys. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't want to break any plastic. Oh, I see. You push them in. You push them in and then you pull up on the case. Case will lift with them. I am having trouble with my difficulties all the way in. See, I feel like I'm going to break plastic. You're not kidding, it's tricky at first. Do I have to, you know, like, uh, say, get behind me spindler or something to get it work one corner at a time? Okay. Now, where does it open? Is it, oh, so it's along that diagonal. Okay. <laughs> After you break the tabs, it's easier to open. Ah, okay, one, it didn't break, but it did free up. Ah, there we go, okay. I think I know where to put, what the pressure points are now. So we've got your nicely shielded case. Oops, I bumped my mouse. Hang on. 
Hey, Retro Techie. Yes, Apple 2GS. So it's got a expansion card in it. <laughs> it's a little dusty. <laughs> I believe that's a RAM expansion. Okay, and for me to use this, is it a ROM 0 or 1? Uh, how do I know? I, am, I imagine you look at the ROM chip and it tells you? Or is it on the board somewhere? It's a ROM 1. Okay. Thanks, Frank. So in order for me to use this with uh, W drive, I'm going to have to insert a card, I believe, because I don't have the adapter for a drive. I do have an external uh, Apple 3.5 drive, but I don't have any disks. So... do have a W drive and I put um, a hard drive image on here for if so ROM 3 and for oh thanks Frank for checking the battery before shipping so okay well, I'm going to have to pull the, um, the, the Drive 2 card out of my uh, 2E and drop it in here so I can use it. This might not work the way you think. Uh, please elaborate, Ron. I do have a smart port card. Will that work with it? I'm I'm stopping run. I'm not doing anything. Okay, a disk two card won't let you boot a hard disk image. Okay. There's also an issue with the voltage on the disk two card and the W drive. Probably best to explain what he needs outside of the chat. Okay, so I'm not going to turn this on. Well, I guess I could turn it on. I'm just not going to be able to boot it. Okay. Well, I'm glad I, I did this live stream. I don't want to nuke it. Yep. We'll do more research before I do anything. If I, you know, if I have to, I'll figure out a way to make uh, disk drives uh, floppies for this so that I can play around with it. I'm sure there's a way you can get from, because this will work with a plus, I believe. So I should be able to copy things from a plus from a blue SCSI onto here. Okay. Yeah, I thought there's smart port support in the 2GS. At least that's what I read online. Anyway, I'm not going to mess with it, so I will I will confer with people and make sure I'm doing the right thing before I do anything. So you had a SCSI card, so you were able to use an external blue SCSI. I'll have to acquire one of those. Okay, well let's do this. Let's, uh, this seems to be seated okay. I'll leave the cover off. And we'll connect it to my my nice little Trinitron. 
and we'll see if we get a screen. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Now, will it give me uh, something on the screen even without a keyboard attached? I mean, I can plug a keyboard in. No, you're, you're not going to tell me I can't use an ADB keyboard with it, are you? Yeah, I read somewhere that you could put a disc 2 card in. So, I must have been mistaken. Any keyboard except an adjustable. Okay. Yep. So good. Some of the stuff I looked up is correct, huh? Yeah, I don't want to mess my W drive up. I mean, that's all kind of the last thing I want to do. So, uh, how am I going to arrange this so you guys can see the screen? I guess I'll have to. Uh, Move the uh, camera. Sorry. Let me get a keyboard. Trina, I'm not falling for the USB keyboard trick. Everybody knows you're supposed to use a PS2 keyboard. Now I've used a W drive with a disk card in Apple IIe. So, are we not talking about the same things? There's no voltage issue with a W drive and a disk 2 card. Okay. There is an issue using a floppy EMU with a soft SP card and a disk 2 card. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a floppy EMU. Thanks for clearing that up, Adam. Yeah, no, hey, I'd rather somebody said stop, I'm not sure, wait and figure it out than somebody to say, go ahead and try it. <laughs> so. So we'll do we'll just do it one step at a time here. We'll try firing it up without any kind of a drive in it. Okay, so the CRT is on. Or as Joe would say, warm up the CRT or something like that. 
So let's see if I can get a get the camera pointed at the screen here. get rid of some of this excess light that's re reflecting. You know, there's not much I can do about that. Yeah, we'll turn that off. Maybe that'll help. Okay. So, three, two, one. Hey, it appears to be working. And it's looking... I love this little animation they do for the Chuck for a startup device. Oh, that's right. A disc 2 card can't do hard... Uh, wait a minute. I thought you could do that. Oh, that's what the soft card does for you? I'm confused. Only five and a quarter images. Okay, so what I need to do is to get the, um, I can use this uh, three and a half drive, which is supposed to go with a 2GS or with a plus. So I think what I'll do is I'll work on trying to, to do the tool chain for getting a disc in here tonight. I won't bore everybody on the stream with it. Which adapter, Garth? If you're talking about the pin adapter... For um, going from one, okay, there's a really good card that lets you use an SD card with disk images on it called the Dan 2 card. It's pretty cheap. KMAC makes them. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds like a good option. Yeah, DB9 to IDC20 adapter, right. Or DB19, not DB9. Um, so this SD card adapter, you say KMAX sells them? Okay. All right, well, I guess that's as far as I'm going to go with this tonight, but I'm really looking forward to using HyperCard on this. And trying it out. There's uh, there's quite a bit of stuff out there for it. But um, I, I, I love how this screen shows up on a Trinitron. It's really clear. Sorry for being off topic, but are you Eric Snyder? No. Don't know an Eric Snyder, sorry. Right. Well, you know, I'm I'm fine. It sounds like a nice self-contained solution instead of using the W drive, so. Yeah, there's a, there's a guy on Facebook that has um, posted a lot of, uh, I've just now converted this HyperCard stack to the 2GS. So he's been doing that a lot. Yes, there are many Eric's. This is my Eric. Is there much difference between a Mac and 2GS HyperCards? Um, color for one. Um, you can't really go 
I don't think you can go from a 2GS back to uh, a regular hypercard stack. Um, but I don't know. I've never really messed with uh, hypercard and 2GS. So, uh, and, and I love using hardware instead of emulators for this stuff. So, anyway, I guess there isn't much else to do with this right now. I'm going to turn it off. And where is the power switch for this monitor? Oh. On the front, of course. Power. There we go. But I want to I want to thank Frank again for giving me such a good deal on this. Um, it's it's really going to uh, be fun to play with, and it's frankly it's smaller than I thought that it was going to be. I thought these things were more on the same scale as a uh, W two, I mean W two, as a two uh, E. Yeah, I know that the TV can be RGB modded. Um, Oh, you only get uh, monochrome through composite. Okay. Yeah, um, Joe pointed that out to me, but this monitor is actually a different model than the one that he's got um, specs for modding. And what I'm thinking about doing is doing the VGA adapter for it. Someone let Eric know. Let Eric know what? 2GS does color over composite. Good. It was just doing black and white because of uh, it not having any boot media, and that's just the way it boots. Good. You guys are just full of information tonight. I love it. <laughs> it just doesn't do color text. Okay. Okay, so I downloaded a bunch of material about the 2GS so I could get started reading up on it. Never touched one before. What I said above about your 800K drive. What about the 800K drive? Yeah, super high res. I'm looking forward to that. So, I can open up, oh, and just use the, the ribbon that's in the drive. Oh, that's an interesting solution. Is there a risk of messing up the W drive, though, doing it that way? Yeah, there's only four screws on the thing. Yep, right on the bottom. Oh, you can't see it because I got the phone in the wrong spot. Let me, let me adjust that. So, yeah, it's just the four screws on the bottom. Yeah, this unit was in, looks like it's in pretty good shape, too. So, I've never tried it. No, yeah, I didn't think so. I don't. I don't really want to um, experiment with uh, that W drive. No, don't do it. All caps. LOL. Yeah, this is not the fireworks channel. We don't want to see smoke. All right. 
we plug the power. Unplug the keyboard. Unplug my sus video card or uh, cable. Let's button it back up, move the keyboard out of the way. So I did uh, help Javier put together, let's put it on the right way, Javier put together a, um, he had it mostly done. It's a Raspberry Pi emulator for the 2GS called um, GS Plus. Um, no active development on it. It's a pretty old emulator. It's got some issues, um, but I was able to get it to um, his his problem. What he was trying to address is that when you when you use those emulators on Raspberry Pis, when it boots, it shows the boot text and everything. It flashes a um, you know a color um, square, a rainbow square uh, when it first starts up. If you don't have the exactly the right voltage um, anyway it's it's rather distracting and um, a lot of people just want to see you know a blank black screen instead of all that stuff coming up it kind of if you think about it it ruins the 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 moment or the feeling about it uh, can't do anything about how slowly it takes I was using a Raspberry Pi uh, 2.0 um, in it well, it wasn't even a 2. It was a 1.1 generation, so it's kind of slow. Um, you can mail me the DB19 adapter kit that was included. Yeah, if you don't need it, Adam, I'd, I'd be happy to accept it. Thank you. Um, you know, if you want me to pay for uh, uh, whatever it costs and, and shipping, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, give me options, right? Uh, so anyway, this this uh, emulator um, is rather finicky, and um, you have to use Alt F4 to exit the emulator. And um, I I do have the source code for it, so I could recompile or change that. The problem with hitting Alt F4 on a Raspberry Pi in terminal mode, it switches to the fourth terminal, and shows a login. So there the keystroke is captured by the emulator and then passed on and the operating system picks it up and and does what it's going to do with it so it's it's not the greatest way of doing it um, but there's a way around that you can add a momentary contact switch to the um, uh, GPIO ports and use that to safely shut down the Raspberry Pi. You put it into low power mode and use it, use the same button to start it back up. So you could have a momentary contact switch for a power switch on it. And that way you don't have to do the Alt F4 and then shut down the Pi. You can just get it to that, you know, it's safe to shut down your computer part and then suspend it. Okay, so what's going on in the chat? Uh, it's one with a 3D printed shroud, but it should work fine. I installed the drive inside the 2C, so I didn't need the DB19 adapter. Oh, great. Thank you. So, but I really love this form factor. Um, you know, like they did it on the, two, uh, the 2C, where they've got the Snow White style. And... Um, one of the things that I really like, and I can't pronounce his name, the, the, the guy that did all the prototype development, and they ended up adopting some of it for the 2C. Um, so there's a bunch of these prototype um, tablets and things like that that um, were designed for Apple. And um, I've been thinking about 3D printing a miniature case that is in that style for a uh, palm type, palm top style but copying the tablet um, 
you know, and use a, a like a Pi 4 or something with a little more power in it to run an emulator for, for uh, you know, a classic Mac on it and use that screen. I think it would be kind of cool to do that. But, but that's just in the, uh, you know, sketches on paper stage right now. Uh, the other thing I did uh, recently, uh, well, let me switch cameras. Hang on. Let me drag this back over here. Where is my mouse? Way over here. So I haven't quite, I've got three monitors going and I haven't quite worked out the arrangement for them yet. So let me drop the mic down here. And move it. And get my mouse. And transition back. So, hi. So anyway, uh, one of the things that... Um, uh, Brian, I can't remember his last name. Uh, Ron and I interviewed him. He did uh, Blah Blob, you know, the hypercard game, and um, it's a vertical scroller with a animated um, blob that you have to navigate through. It, it's a very good game. It's exactly the kind of game I I'm terrible at. Like, uh, here's another game I'm terrible at, but I really like these things. You know, like uh, Floppy Mac. It's awesome that people are producing new new games for the uh, for the classic uh, hardware. Anyway, um, so Blob Blob uses HyperCard, and because of uh, how much is going on in it, you really need to have it at, like on a G3 with a power PC processor if you're going to run it native. Um, but if you're what he did to make it more accessible to people was put it in a custom uh, uh, version of Mini VMAC so that you could download it for Windows, Linux, or OS X and run it inside there. And he just set it so that it ran full tilt so it would be fast enough to, to perform. And it's, it's a great solution for how do you distribute a game like that to people that, you know, are not going to have a classic Mac or, you know, they set up the environment and everything to do it. So I talked to him about it, and um, his code is available up on GitHub. And uh, it takes a little bit to get things set up. Um, the guy who wrote Mini V, me, blah, can't talk. The guy who wrote Mini V Mac had a very creative solution for um, configuring the game. So instead of having a configure file, you actually modified the source code. Which with a bunch of definitions that said I want it to be full screen or I want it to you know emulate this processor all that kind of stuff to simplify it for distribution. Well, the problem is is that that code is convoluted as all get out because of it, and it's kind of difficult to set up. Well, I'd been trying to set it up. Uh, the instructions from the original uh, developer are very kind of obtuse. Um, he hasn't been seen for years. Um, and But there are several GitHub repositories that have it set up and, you know, where you can, you can uh, cross compile it. And um, I was struggling with something and then Eric Helgeson pointed out to me, he says, uh, yeah, I've already done that. It's all available on my GitHub. And it also will load... Um, you know, the uh, disk images that are used for Blue SCSI instead of having to be the old ones. And I'm like, oh, awesome. So he helped me for several hours, actually, the other day, um, trying to uh, re revisit my um, C programming foo and uh, my Linux uh, programming configuration stuff and also teaching a dog new tricks because he uses Docker to uh, handle the uh, rebuilding and everything, and I've never used Docker before. Anyway, long story short, uh, I eventually got it working, uh, found a couple of things that he tweaked in it to, to correct them, and uh, it's working great. Now I just need to incorporate uh, the techniques that Brian used to be able to make a distributable hypercurrent application that just automatically boots up you don't have to do anything else. You just start the emulator and you, you're in the game. 
Um, and I, I tried it out in uh, uh, full tilt speed mode and everything with my um, adventure game, and it actually performs better than it does on my uh, my Power PC um, G3. So so that's really great. Um, that'll be what and one of the things that'll end up on the disc for the for the boxed set will be that emulator version of it on a disc. Um, I'll also have, um, it'll be downloadable, but I really want to make a box set with, uh, you know, a, a traditional manual and some art and things in it. Um, have a, since it's a text adventure game, you need to draw your own map to keep track of where you're at. So there'll be grid sheets in the back for drawing maps, that kind of thing. Anyway, it's just an update on where I'm at with that. Very close to getting the code done, um, and then uh, I need to need to add some more audio sources to it. So, um, yeah, so that's that's what's going on right now. It would be great to do a stripped down version of it for the 2GS because I don't, you know, this the 2GS will be able to play a, a slim down version of it, and uh, I want to have a slim down version that'll run on a native. Uh, you know, like on a plus or um, an SE, um, but that's going to have require really ripping out some of the stuff and trying to be creative about how I did some some of the coding. Well, that, so that's it. I don't really have anything else to go over. Um, I want to point out that um, I got very excited about setting up a user group, uh, a traditional user group, but virtual. So. Um, you may be aware that Apple used to have a HyperCard user group. That's where this t-shirt comes from. And um, I'm trying to revive it. It hasn't been active since, I don't know, early 2000s. And uh, there is actually, um, they're not run by Apple. They're sanctioned by Apple. Uh, user group organization that you can appeal to uh, to get an official recognized status. Um, unfortunately, their website's not working properly, and um, I've been chatting with uh, the guy that runs uh, all of the user groups, and he, he said, I'm sorry, we, you know, the web developer's too busy right now with uh, some uh, fundraising stuff for uh, Hawaii, you know, the, the uh, town that uh, burned, and uh, they weren't going to be able to get to it and fix it until the first of the year. Uh, I've been checking my email. They haven't done anything yet, so it might not be a viable option um, to revive that user group. Does it mean I can't do it without, uh, you know, the Apple blessing for it? I could still create a user group. And um, I was kind of looking forward to being able to use the media kit that they let you use, that Apple does, but hey, I'll work around it. So um, hopefully that'll take off sometime this year. Uh, what else we got coming up? Marchintosh is coming up very quickly, so you want to make sure you you uh, look for the Marchintosh uh, tag, hashtag, for all the content. I'm sure there's lots of people that are preparing things. I, I'll be doing something. Hypercard, of course. And then um, in April, we've got um, April's Apples, or a April Apples. I think that's what we ended up with for that so one of the things I wanted to do is some 2GS work uh, in April. I also pull out my Apple IIe that um, that Adam helped me get together and uh, do some more programming on that. So and uh, Retro Techie's birthday is coming up in half a year. So please welcome or give uh, Retro Techie a a, a pre birthday wish. I guess. April apples. Yes, we're on. Um, so that's it. So just, I'm busy. Um, I haven't produced much uh, video content, and um, I am going to rectify that. This is one of the reasons why I did this today. And, oh, uh, uh, Tech Ambrosia is going to be up at 6 o'clock, so make sure you join her uh, live stream. I'll be there. And uh, 
thanks a lot, everybody, for coming out today. Um, I do have a Patreon if you care to, care to join that. Um, totally up to you, of course. If you uh, enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Um, hit that smash the, the thumbs up button, the like button. And uh, I also have a Kofi coffee, you know, if you care to do that. Um, or just send me comments and, uh, you know, questions about HyperCard or anything else. Um, you know, I don't know a lot of other things, but um, I can make it up. So, anyway, going to sign off now. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. And, of course, I didn't queue up the outro, so now i got to go find the outro. There's the outro. Bye.